we're going to talk about the reactions of alkynes in pretty much the same order that we did the reactions of alkenes and reacting with similar reagents. So the first reaction we're going to talk about is reacting an alkyne with HX, an acid. And that acid is generally HCl or HBr. One thing we are going to have to consider is the subtle differences between reacting with terminal alkynes and internal alkynes. And we'll see why that is. So here we're going to start by looking at how HCl reacts with a terminal alkyne. And I've specified here one equivalent. What that means is if I use one mole of this alkyne, I'm going to use an equal ratio one mole of HCl. This is going to follow Markovnikov's addition and give us Markovnikov selectivity. So if we look at the alkyne, this carbon of the triple bond has zero hydrogen attached to it. The terminal carbon of the triple bond has one hydrogen attached to it. So that means when we add HCl across that triple bond, the hydrogen will go to this side where there's more hydrogen, the Cl will go to this side. So let's draw that product. We're going to react away one of the pi bonds. So we go from the alkyne to the alkene. Now I don't want to just draw it like this because once it becomes the alkene, it's no longer linear. So I'm going to bend that down and draw my alkene. So now we have the new hydrogen that added and the Cl that added. If you want to keep track of your original hydrogen on that carbon, we can draw it in. It's right here, and it's still connected. Once you've done this, if you want to continue to react, we can add a second mole or a second equivalent of HCl. And that's just going to do a basic alkene reaction that you've already learned. If we take this alkene and react it with HCl, this will follow Markovnikov addition or Markovnikov selectivity and put the new hydrogen on this side and the second Cl on this side of the double bond. So that will add across the double bond to give us a single bond. We still have our Cl, hydrogen, and hydrogen, and then we add the new Cl to the more substituted carbon and the hydrogen to the less substituted carbon. If you want to stop at this chloroalkene, you just use one equivalent of acid. If you want the dichloroalkane, you use two equivalents of acid, or a simpler way to do this is just use an excess of acid. So I could write this as HCl, two equivalents, or HCl, if I write excess, that's just an abbreviation for excess. Both will give me the product. Now let's look at the mechanism for this reaction. It's similar to the addition to alkenes, but it is subtly different because we avoid the carbocation. So the easiest way to think about this is we have a strong acid that can dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. And what will happen is we'll put a proton close to the triple bond and also a chloride anion close to the triple bond. When those come into close proximity, the triple bond will react with the proton, but at the same time, the chloride acts as a nucleophile and attacks the more substituted carbon of that triple bond. So in a single step, the HCl is added across that triple bond. When we do that, the triple bond becomes a double bond 
and we add the Cl to the more substituted carbon, the hydrogen to the less substituted carbon. The hydrogen and Cl add trans or end up trans across the pi bond. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter because we have two hydrogen. So you're going to have one hydrogen cis and one trans, but this does show you how the chlorine adds from one side, the hydrogen the other, to get the chlorine and the hydrogen that was added on opposite sides. So why does this happen in a single step? Well, you already know the answer to that based on our earlier discussion. It's to avoid the very unstable vinyl cation. If we were to try to do this in two steps, you would start with your alkyne and react it with the acid like we do in alkene and follow a Markovnikov type addition. We have our original hydrogen, we would put the new hydrogen here, but then you have to put a positive charge on that double bond. That's very unstable and that doesn't happen. So by doing everything in a single step, this reaction goes through a lower energy pathway than it would to form this vinyl cation. Now we're going to look at this reaction using an internal alkyne. The biggest difference here is if we look at each of these carbons, both of them have the same substitution. They both have zero hydrogen attached. So what that means is there's no Markovnikov selectivity. When you don't have Markovnikov selectivity, you're going to add in both directions. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the HBr across this double bond and sometimes it even might help you if you number this and we'll, I'll number it in IUPAC fashion just to be consistent. We have six carbons. So in the product, we should still have six carbons. And the triple bond was between two and three. So once you add something across it, it goes from the triple bond to a double bond, but that double bond is still between two and three. And we're adding HBr. So we can add a hydrogen to two and a Br to three. That's one product. The other product, have the same numbering. Still have the double bond between two and three, but now we'll do the opposite because we don't have Markovnikov selectivity. So we'll put the hydrogen at three and the Br at two. In this case, we have these two products where the atoms are connected to different places. Here the Br is at two, here it's at three. So these aren't stereoisomers. These are constitutional isomers. And those are the two products of the reaction. If you were to have used an excess of HBr, this one would react with HBr. Now we would get Markovnikov selectivity and put the second hydrogen here and the second Br here. But this one would also react and give us another product with the H and the BR.